Howdy crypto friends, haven't checked in in a couple days because not a whole lot has changed. We still have the daily exponential resistance on Bitcoin's daily time frame. And we're still looking down at the low of support as the must hold level 3457 on Coinbase. And we're just slowly fading down towards that level. I drew this channel on the four hour time frame. We just broke bearish below it and now we're struggling at this level. We can see we hit it as support multiple times. Certainly enough for it to be a valid support line to be watching. And we have a downtrend resistance line. Again, the price rejected three distinct separate times. That's enough for it to be valid for me. And I don't usually watch channels, but I pretty much just said to myself, I drew this because it stood out and I said, all right, this resistance line is lining up with the exponential resistance on the daily. If we look at it, they're very similar. And I just said to myself, as long as we're in this channel, not much has changed at all. And I don't really need to look at any updated price. Once we break from this channel, that's when I'm interested again in Bitcoin. So potential for a bear break here. The exponential moving averages are resistance. If we keep up this lower high, lower low pattern, we're looking down at 3457 as the short term support. Looking on the weekly time frame, it looks like an inside bar last week, an inside bar this week. That might play out until next week. It remains to be seen. Bulls need to show up soon for another little bounce and another lower high to try and hold up and hold that support. But very clearly, the bears continue to have the upper hand at this point. So most important price levels of resistance for me, 38.77 and 40.35. But even then, again, I need to get over the daily exponential resistance. I have no interest in the bulls of Bitcoin until we get over the daily exponential resistance after this many clear rejections. So that's what I'm watching. If we can get over that and break 44.15, that will be notable. Until then, it's all bears at this point. Ethereum on the daily time frame, the same slow fade. Never even touched the daily exponential resistance. And 98.20 is very quickly approaching. We drop down to 99.50, about 1.5% 1 above support. And we're on the verge of testing it. The four hour time frame, big bear volume spike, a clear bear flag confirming and following through. If we break the messy weekly chart, just want to look for the next support level. If we break that low, and after 98.20, there is nothing. So I'm looking at 75.89 after 98.20. Have to be very cautious as bulls when you have no support nearby. And I'll show you why on EOS here in just a moment. But in terms of price levels for Ethereum, we're looking at 107.78 and 112. But again, be picky as a bull. We have to be picky in this environment. And if we don't get over daily exponential resistance, who cares what the bulls are doing because they're not proving anything. Again, that's the mindset that I'm currently in to prevent myself from getting over eager, from over trading, trying to be bullish. It's just all bears at this point and they're very comfortable. And that's not changing without significant shifts in momentum. So 2637 is Litecoin support that we're looking down at or our bear break just occurred resistance. 3086 and 3186 and as far as support goes after that level of 2637 next level that we're looking down at long way away 1908 is the next level before we pretty much erase the entirety of 2017 still a ways to go before we get there i'm looking back at the five six dollar range to completely erase that move but again 1908 is the only support until we get to those levels XRP USD, same thing, fading back to the low of 329 as the only support nearby. Four hour lower highs are very clear. 3685 is the most important resistance for me here. Hardly even saw a bounce inside bar bear break. Daily exponential resistance didn't even get touched, just like Ethereum. And if Ripple sees a bear break under 329, we are looking back down at 252. There are more supports here on the weekly time frame than there are on some of these other individual names. BNB. So Binance here had a bull break and they had some news come out and the price ran up before the news came out. So likely some insider information going around there. But here on the daily time frame, we can see it has very clearly broken the correlation with Bitcoin. We had a tight five day range break bullish on a big volume spike and we got some solid follow through. The bull break on the daily was 544 and we ran all the way up to 662. So very significant short term gains on this tight pattern breaking and let's just look at the four hour time frame here because it was an equilibrium where we had the high of 563 the low of 495 lower high of 544 
higher low of 501, bull break of 544, and significant follow through. Right now on the four hour time frame, the uptrend is still intact, but we're watching out for the potential of a bearish reversal four hour pattern, a bearish reversal head and shoulders. So we have the left shoulder, the continuation for the head, which was a volume climax signaling the top. We then came down and potentially formed the right shoulder. And if we lose this support level of 581, that is going to lose the four hour uptrend and tell us that further daily consolidation is coming. So that's the most important support level right now. And if we wanted to zoom in on the hourly time frame, equilibrium. So high of 662, low of 581, lower high at 634. And now we're going to look for a higher low compared to 581 if the bulls want to try and hold on to that four hour time frame. Lose that four hour uptrend. And again, we zoom out to the daily and we look for the daily to have to consolidate to try and form a higher low. So it did stand out for its bullish action. What were some initial clues? Well, the four hour pattern breaking bullish was certainly a clue. Those lower highs that nobody else really broke in terms of the major names certainly broke here. But let's look at the alert system. So I haven't been using the alert system very much, admittedly, because I'm not trading the crypto space very actively right now. It's not a beneficial trading environment for me and my style. So here's the 15 minute time frame, and these black arrows are our abnormal volume alert. So we had an abnormal volume trigger here, no surprise, big bear volume, and that was dumping down to our low. We then traded sideways, and look at the bull signals the or i should say the abnormal volume we had no abnormal volume for a couple days it triggered on the flush down the climax to the low and then it started firing off before the bulls really showed up so it showed us some volume we started shifting momentum on the 15 minute time frame the clear bull break again on that four hour chart was 544 so if we look at when the price broke here on the 15 minute time frame it was a break up here but we at that point we had already seen 15 minute abnormal volume, abnormal, abnormal, abnormal four times before the four hour bull signal was given. And you can see the three times that it was triggered is when the volume down here, just look at the bars, they're slowly creeping up. Then we had the huge surge where, yeah, okay, it's very obvious there's abnormal volume, but we got signals earlier on. And again, the abnormal volume alert is taking an average over a certain period of time and saying, all right, we want to make sure that you know, this isn't just a one candlestick spike up of big volume that evaporates. If we get multiple candlesticks triggering above this average, a certain percentage higher, that's when it's going to fire off. And it happened multiple times before the bull volume surged in. And then, of course, we just got continuation. And at that point, all the, you know, the alerts of the abnormal volume were very clear because it was a surge in bull volume pushing the price higher. But it was not very clear before that four-hour bull break when we got three different signals in a period of about, let's say maybe five, six hours here back on December the 4th. So the volume, again, price, volume precedes price is the saying, and you see it time and time again, where there's little bit, little clues when you look back and see the shift in momentum and the volume start to build as those in the know are accumulating. You know, for you to see increased bull volume, when Bitcoin's bearish, the entire sector is bearish. There's no correlation there. So that bull volume is coming from somewhere. Why would it be on Binance and this individual coin? And then the news comes out. This is the herd reacting. That's when the volume's obvious. This is the insiders acting when it is right before the news release comes out. EOS. So we've been talking about in some of these videos about going short and choosing the altcoins that have no support nearby if you're going to short something. Look at 418 and 387. Once those two support levels break, the next support level that you have is $3 and then 47 cents after that. There is no support in this zone. The weekly time frame broke 418. That was a very clear bear signal. If the bears wanted to be extra patient, they waited another 6% drop to break 387. And at this point, here we are down $1.60 from that point, And that is roughly 40% or so on that dump. So again, if you are looking bearish, the altcoins that have no support nearby, which Ethereum and Litecoin are two of those names. If we see weekly lower lows here, there's no support nearby. So that's the ideal scenario for a short. It's not equivalent to a blue sky breakout in terms of all time highs, but it's equivalent to reaching levels that have not been seen in a long time with no resistance nearby. It's the opposite here. We have no support nearby. This daily time frame is just a straight dump down. No two green days in a row. 
in three weeks and just stair steps, lower highs, lower lows, increasing bear volume. It's just the ideal chart if you are a bear. Look at the four hour, 12 and 26 period exponential moving averages. The bear cross occurred at 540. Here we are down at 220. There has been no bull cross since that bear cross occurred. So this is just complete control by the bears, a lack of support, and as ideal a scenario as you can possibly be in as a bear. So no sign of a bounce, no support nearby. We'll watch $2 psychological, but EOS is in trouble. And any altcoin, anybody that breaks to levels where you have no support for 40, 50, 60%, that is the kind of name that shorts are going to jump on. And that's going to cause it to fall even more significantly. So that's where we stand as we head into tomorrow. Not a whole lot to update. The bears still have slow and steady control. We're not dumping. We're just stair-stepping our way down on the four-hour time frame. The channel is what I'm watching. The exponential resistance on the daily is what I'm watching. And we're watching for the potential of another leg down. Shorts are certainly still high. Let's check in on that. Shorts on the daily time frame. We're approaching those all-time high levels. We need another 5,000 shorts to be opened up, to be up at those all-time highs. But the... <clears throat> Excuse me. The higher the shorts are when we drop to lower lows, the less likely we're going to get significant follow through as those shorts will need to do some covering. But at this point, shorts have no reason to fear anything. And it's all about those daily exponential resistances. And again, you want to put yourself in the mindset, say to yourself, all right, even if you're not short, if I were short, when would I want to cover? And of course, it depends on your trade game plan and your time frame. But at this point, I would very confidently, if I'm looking at a swing short position, the last little bounce attempt we topped out at 42.77. So I could say to myself, anything under 42.77, that's just fine by me. It's just a lower high on the daily time frame. So again, that's something I do with stocks and all the time in my trading. Depending on what side I'm on, I always want to put myself in the opposing side's mindset. Imagine it like a battle or a war where you're trying to think like your enemy. That's what you need to be doing with trading as well. Thanks again. Continue to do good things out there. And... The, the space right now in the Canadian MJ space is crypto 10 months, less than that, probably six months ago. It's despair. It's falling apart. It's so crazy to watch these two events happen uh, and the timing that they have happened with the huge crypto run up and now the despair for a year and the just slow fade. And look at the MJ space now. We went from $59 and here we are two months later down at $31, almost a 50% drop. This was a sell the news event for Canadian MJ leading into the first day of sales when the stores open their doors. It's just such a repeated lesson that we just learned in crypto. And it's just such a clear lesson that these markets are all driven by psychology and emotion because they're doing the exact same things. And we're getting to the point now of maximum despair. And this chart isn't even updated enough. WEED traded today while CGC did not. So 76 down to 37. We have seen a 50% drop. We're just, because we ran so hard, we're giving it all back extremely fast and getting all the same messages that I got six months ago from crypto. I'm getting them now from Canadian MJ holders. They're sick to their stomach. They had no stop loss. They gave all their gains back. They had this much money and now it's worth half as much. It's just lessons that people have to learn for themselves. Everybody in crypto has now learned this lesson. Now we're seeing Canadian MJ give the exact same lesson and fascinating to watch and it's a great lesson to learn from and we have to utilize this information going forward when we ever see this scenario again we'll be better prepared i appreciate you watching that's all have a great day we'll see you tomorrow